Hey lap swimmers, this is Aaron Lawson. You're gonna have to bear with my uh, my voice once again because I'm fully not over this, uh, this sickness that I've had going on. But uh, we'll get right into the questions. This is question number one. And uh, this one comes from Sherry Troxel. In the comments, she mentioned um, goggles because I gave away a pair of goggles last week. She mentioned what are the best kinds and what are some tricks for fogging um, goggles that fog up, you know, because it's always a problem for everybody. Everybody can relate to, to your goggles fogging up. And plain and simple, let's get into the science behind it so you guys know what's going on. Um, your goggles are always gonna have a tendency to fog up. Basically, you're warmer on the inside of the goggle than it is on the outside. If it's air or if it's water, whatever's on the outside of the goggles, that's gonna be cooler than you and your body heat on the inside of the goggle. You're always gonna have moisture on the inside of the goggles. You're always gonna have it from sweat. You're gonna have it from maybe leaking in from the pool, from your eyes. Your eyes have a lot of moisture in them. So all of this, the hot and the cold on the outside is gonna cause your goggles to fog. It's just something you have to deal with. Number one, this one seems like common sense, but get as little um, water inside of your goggles as possible try to keep all the water out no it's not okay just to have a little bit as soon as that warms up it's going to turn into fog so make sure that you've got a nice tight suction when you put those things on there are a lot of sprays that you can go to the store and you can buy some anti-fog spray but there's several different brands out there find one that you like that works with you and go with it if that's if that's what you prefer there's two household products that you can use you can use uh, baby shampoo you can always put a little bit of baby shampoo swirled around on the inside and it'll create like a little film that'll help with the fogging. You can also use toothpaste. Toothpaste is a good way to prevent it. Um, some people clean their goggles with tooth toothpaste anyway. Some people clean their watches and their goggles with toothpaste, uh, the non-abrasive kind. But that also creates a little bit of a film that'll help it not to, to fog. And some people, they use good old fashioned spit on the inside of the goggles. Um, those are usually the people that just want to go after it. Yes, um, the spit does have a tendency to, to wear down the protective barriers or films that's on, that's on your goggle. But if you go through goggles relatively quickly with um, chlorine and overuse and different things like that, that's going to wear away over time anyways. So some people just like the good old fashioned spit, which actually works. Um, you know, rub that around on the inside and for a limited period of time that will actually help it not to fog up. So Sherry, I hope those tricks help you out and best of luck. All right, this next question is from uh, Danielle Baker, and uh, she's a swim instructor and is, is looking for ways to actually help her, her swimmers that happen to be at different levels of, their, of, their, of ability as far as their kick. And something that kids have a tendency to do is that with their kicking is that they have a tendency to you kind of run in the water I've talked about this a lot of times is that they get that running motion or kicking motion from their knees and they get a lot of, a lot of action going on like this with their legs while they're trying to learn how to kick and plain and simple what they're not doing is they're not recognizing from their hip the up and down motion that occurs from their hip that happens up here. So the easiest way that I have found is actually to make it fun. You know, to have the kids either in the water, holding onto the side of the pool, or laying on the pool deck, and have them have very stiff legs, and you want them to have this motion, so the up and down motion has to originate from their hip. Is it goofy? Yes. Is it an actual good kick? No, it's not. But it's to serve a purpose of teaching that motion from the hip and I like to sometimes even tell them you know act like you have robot legs you know and you can do it in a robot voice if you want to while you're telling them to do it but get those kicks kicking like this and then after that they'll still have that muscle memory of what the action is from their hip and then they'll start to work in a good proper flutter kick after that so Danielle I hope that helps um, try that trick out with your kids and guys the free workout this week I believe is a 700 yard workout so I hope you guys are enjoying these and staying on point.
right, guys, I'm going to run back into this uh, sporting goods store here and see if I can find another tool that's great for lap swimmers to help you when you're on the pool deck or even when you're at home. It's these TheraBands. And sometimes they'll issue them out for like a physical therapy or trainers will give them to their clients or different things like that but they're actually really great for swimmers because it'll help you to to get in the nooks and crannies of your your joints and muscles hey guys um I found some that they have here at this uh, sporting goods store, and they're, they're not really TheraBands. You can get some that are a lot cheaper than, than what they have here. You can see. These are about, they started about 20 bucks, they moved up to about 35 bucks. But these, a lot of times they have, they're associated with like the color, and these are black right here. So this is gonna be the lighter resistance. And um, they also have, you know, like these, They've got blue on this one, which is going to be the heavier resistance. That's no one, not always true, but everybody's got their own color system, and that's usually what you'll find. But these are great, especially for people that need a little bit of extra help for um, loosening up their joints or their muscles, or you got a sore spot that you always need, needs a little bit of extra care. You can use these in order to get those exercises and get your stretches, and there's a lot of videos that tell you how to use these, but they're great for swimmers, all right? But you can do a little bit better on pricing on, like, uh, Amazon and and uh, swim outlet and there's a panel swim shop and there's a lot of different places online that actually um, offer you a little bit better pricing than like 20 bucks and 35 bucks you can do a little bit better than that so uh, if you guys shop around you'll be able to find that but i hope this helps you out and uh, get you some therabands to help yourself loosen up or to strengthen while you're at the house around the pool day all right guys all right guys and the third and final question is from Hong Van, hope I'm saying that correctly, but he's having a little bit of trouble with water going in his face and up his nose while he's doing backstroke. And if you're a swimmer that's struggling with this as well, then I want you to check three things with your stroke. Number one, make sure you're not slamming your arms into the water while you're doing backstroke. You should lay your arms in nice and smooth, let them fall behind and just kind of lay into the water. If you're slamming them in the water, just plain and simple, you may be splashing water onto your face, therefore water up your nose. Number two, if you are slamming your stroke or you're trying a little bit too hard, instead of having a nice smooth roll with your body, you're kind of slamming from one side to the other with your stroke, you could be causing a bob as you go down the pool. Literally, your body will be bobbing up and down as you're going down the pool. And you don't want that as well because you could be dipping dangerously close to allowing water to go onto your face, therefore up your nose. And the last one is the easiest one to actually check is make sure that you're not tilting your head too far back. You should have your chin in kind of a neutral, relaxed position. So check your chin and make sure that you're not leaning it way far back and therefore allowing water to go onto your face and then up your nose. So Hong Von, I hope that helps you out and best of luck. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and enter your yardage if you want to. You can just respond on one of my videos and just put your yardage. Hey, I did 15,000 yards this week and I'll keep track of it and then I'll put the top 10 actually on the board here. But I hope this is helping you out and as always, if you got a question, I would love to answer it. So don't be afraid to ask. All right, guys. Take care.